Hey everybody, welcome to the short video on how you can use GitOps practices for governance of projects in Kubernetes. Now, before I get started into this, I should give you a quick whirlwind tour of what you're going to see in the environment. And I apologize in advance because this is the extent of my drawing skills. Here's what we've got. So number one is our user. Everything starts and ends with the user. The user is going to make a request into a service desk. Here, I'm using Jira service desk. You don't have to, it can be any service desk tool. The only requirement of it is that it's able to make some sort of webhook out to Ansible Tower. Now Ansible Tower will have a set of projects and templates already created and one of them. All right, let's take a look. So what you're looking at right now, this is my uh, service desk customer portal that I've custom created in Jira service desk. Like I said, in, like I said previously, I'm using Jira Service Desk. You don't have to. You can use any other kind of service desk that's out there. The only requirement is that it's able to generate a webhook that can go back to Tower and kick off an Ansible Tower job. I've got just the one item in here. It's just get me an OpenShift project. You give me a name, optionally a, a leader or potentially an approver for the project, a description, and who the members are going to be. I'm going to come back to this one in a second. I want to show you the rest of the environment first. Next, tab along is Ansible Tower. I've got two pro oh, sorry, I've got two templates in here rather. The bottom one mirroring uh, OCP content, that's one I use in my home lab. Create OpenShift project. This is the template that is going to be reached out and launched by, um, by Jira Service Desk. Nothing fancy, I've got an Ansible playbook that just goes and creates a bunch of, re bunch of resources for me. It needs a couple of credentials. One is a GitLab private key because it's going to commit into Git on my behalf. Uh, and I need some credentials for the Jira Service Desk API so that I can reach out and pull the information out of the issue that gets created. There's a few extra sorry, a few extra variables rather that get created uh, and are passed into the playbooks. And one thing that I'll show you when the job launches is that Jira will pass into the playbook the issue ID that was created. And with that, I can reach back up to the API and pull the extra information that I need. Click across now, this is Argo CD. It is running on my OpenShift cluster. I've already set this one up. You can see I've got one application in here called Governance Parent. If you're familiar with it, this is an application of applications model in Argo CD. Essentially, this the purpose of this application is to monitor one specific directory in my Git repository. And that directory will be filled with Argo CD application custom resources. And there'll be one of those per OpenShift project that gets created and gets submitted. Each of those application resources will point to its own directory in Git, and that directory will have all of the Kubernetes resources that correspond to that project. Stay with me because I will show you what that looks like uh, live in just a moment. Here's my Git repository, creatively named OpenShift Argo. I've got a directory full of Ansible and playbooks and the like that I'm going to run. For example, Here's my create new project. It's a bit, it's a bit dodgy. I could probably do with some refactoring to be perfectly honest, but you can see it's going to check some things out from Git, template out project YAML, commit it all back to Git and make comments on the Jira ticket. Back up one more level. Argo CD applications, empty at the moment, but when this is run through, you'll see one new file in here that corresponds to the project that has been created through self-service. This is the directory that is being monitored by that governance, uh, by that governance parent project that I just talked about. In here, project KADS resources. This, when this is populated, you're going to see one subdirectory in here, and there'll be one well, there'll be one subdirectory per project that gets created. When I click through into those directories, you'll see a bunch of Kubernetes YAML resource files which correspond to the project that's being created. This directory and the subdirectories within it are what the extra Argo CD applications are gonna monitor. Again, I will show you through all of this in a second. And lastly, this is just my OpenShift container platform dashboard. Like I said, I'm using OpenShift. You don't have to, you could do this with any Kubernetes that's out there from vanilla to any other kind of distribution. Doesn't really matter. The concepts apply in all cases. So let's go back to our service desk. Let's go and order Project Alpha. You can see I've pre-ordered a few of these in the past in various forms. This is the description for Project Alpha. Project members, I've got these creatively named user one and user two that's in here. Let's create it. All right. Now Jira sat there in the background. It's already triggered a webhook out the tower. If I go back to jobs, 
Try that again. There we go. You can see job 566 has kicked off, create OpenShift project. That was through the webhook from Jira. Go back up to the top. Jira has passed in this parameter specifically, which corresponds to the job ID that was just created. We look it up, we create some temporary directories. We template out a whole collection of Kubernetes YAML files that we care about specifically for Project Alpha. We add and commit them all into Git. And now the playbook is waiting. It's waiting for Argo CD to pick up this new application. Let's jump into Git. Let's have a look at what's been added. We'll start an Argo CD applications. Actually, we'll give this a quick refresh. That's better. So I've got this new commit that just came in. Committed new OpenShift project, project alpha to system of record, and Ansible Tower authored this. This used that, um, that GitLab key that I showed you earlier. If I go into Argo City Applications, you can see now I've got this project alpha.yaml. We crack it open. It's an Argo City application resource. Same thing, it's on the default cluster, but it's going to the same URL, OpenShift Argo, but now it's looking at this specific path within that Git repository. Remember that project KDS resources project alpha. So let's go and have a look at what's in that directory. We'll go back up. KRS resources. Now we've got a project alpha directory. We open it up and here's all those YAML files that Ansible Tower templated out for me. So for example, here is the project definition specifically for project alpha. Or I can have a look at the CPU resource quota that I assigned for project alpha or I could have a look at the, what else have I got? Let's have a look at some network policy to allow traffic from the same namespace. All of this was committed out by Ansible and it was committed to Git by Ansible. What's now happened, hopefully by now, we'll have a look back in Ansible Tower. Argo City has now synchronized the application. Ansible Tower has seen this and it's finished and it's closed off the Jira ticket. If I come back to my Jira ticket, give it a refresh, all this has happened automatically. Tower is using my credentials, so it appears as me. It provides the key details about what's happened. Hey, you can log on here. We're done. Close and resolve the ticket automatically. If I go back to Argo CD, you can now see that I've got my parent project, and now I've got this additional Argo CD application called Project Alpha. Sure enough, you can see it comes from the OpenShift Argo repository, that same path that we just had a look at. Project KRS Resources, Project Alpha, and it creates the namespace. If we jump in there, these are all of the resources corresponding one per YAML file you saw in that repo that have been created in the OpenShift or in the Kubernetes cluster straight away. Two role bindings, the project resource, three network policies, and two resource quotas at all. And lastly, just to wrap all this up, we have a look in OpenShift and sure enough, there is Project Alpha. That's all well and good, we want to make changes to it. So the next step is let's say we want to go and change the quota for Project Alpha. Now, normally you might have another self-service item that does exactly the same thing. Goes and gets the repositories, changes the quota for the YAML, commits the changes into source control, Argo CD picks them up, makes the changes in the cluster. I don't have another catalog item, so I'm going to go and make those changes manually in Git right now. So we'll go to Project Alpha. I'm going to pick the resource quota. We're going to edit it live. I'm going to say I want 1500 millicores from CPU requests and 2500 millicores for CPU limits. Increase project alpha CPU request and limit. Again, normally if you were doing this properly in production, you wouldn't allow people to commit directly to master. They would need to come in through a merge request. We commit the changes. Okay, now that's in Git. The problem is the cluster doesn't ref or doesn't doesn't look like this at the moment. It doesn't have these new limits for sorry new requests and limits for my CPU resources. Normally, what I can do is we just wait. I have these Argo CD applications set to sync automatically. I think it's every three minutes or so. I'm impatient. I'm going to tell it to force sync straight away. You can see it's out of sync. It's now resyncing. It's now all finished. We'll go into my compute resources resource quota, which is the one we just changed. We pull it open, we scroll down, and sure enough, the live settings on the cluster are 2,500 for limits and 1,500 for requests. And that is how easy it is to set up GitOps 
to manage project governance using OpenShift or any Kubernetes that you want, Git, Argo CD, Ansible Tower, and your service desk platform of choice.